Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm sat in my Defender 90, as you can probably tell by the state of this roof right here. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a full ownership review of this car. How much did I buy this car for? How much have I spent on it? Has it been worth it in the end? Have I had any problems with it over the last two years that I've owned it? And what have I enjoyed most about owning this car? Is it really worth all the hype? I've been in your world. My car is a 2007 Keswick Green Defender 90. And there's a few things I wanted when I was looking for a car like this. Firstly, I always wanted a Defender for ages, forever. Since I was younger, I wanted a Defender. I love the iconic time, the style of the Defender, the sharp angles. There literally is nothing like it on the road. And even today, um, particularly with a new Defender coming out, these cars are still quite timeless. And you really don't see anything else like it on the road, apart from maybe the Ineos Grenadier, Grenadier however you pronounce that. For me, I wanted a Defender 90. I didn't need a 110 for the capacity. I do have two seats in the back usually, but I've taken them out at the moment. A 90 was what I wanted. I like the look of the short wheelbase. I don't do a lot of off-roading particularly. I wanted one just because it's a car I've always wanted and the opportunity came that I was able to buy one. Now, when I was looking for Defenders, um, I was quite shocked at how expensive they are as a car because they are so basic and miserable to drive generally. Now, I was um, looking for... Um, I wanted a TD5 engine, not a Puma engine. And the reason I wanted a TD5 was because that was the last power plant that was made um, internally in Land Rover. Then the, after 2007, you got the Pumas. They were a Ford engine unit. Um, in actual fact, the Pumas are said to be much more comfortable and more refined inside, better gearing. At the time, I didn't really know. I wanted a TD5 and I wanted a TD5. And that's what I ended up looking for and ended up getting. Now, when I was looking for Defenders, they were quite expensive. But I, I was I, I spent a long time on Auto Trader and all the usual websites looking for this particular car. It had to be Keswick Green as well, which is quite a hard combination, a TD5 and Keswick Green. And this was the last model year they made them. So this, was, this car particularly was built in November 2006, manufactured and registered in January 2007. So it really was the last TD5s uh, that Land Rover put out. Now, when I bought this car... It had 70,000 miles on the clock um, and it was in pretty good condition. There was no rust. The chassis was well maintained. And I picked this car up for around £15,000, which although sounds like a lot, if you're looking at Defenders online, you'll see that actually that's quite good value considering this car is a 2007, 70,000 miles uh, in Keswick Green and a 90. So I was really pleased with that actually, as I saw stuff online come up and got more expensive, I feel like I got quite a good deal there. Now I've spent probably around three and a half thousand pound on this car, doing loads of things to it, including um, engine remaps, the station remap, it's got the performance intercooler, it's got new tires on it, it's had body parts re-sprayed and touched up. I've managed to um, kind of restore a lot of the elements of this car that were looking a little bit tired and made them look a lot better. So LED headlights, um, so quite a few bits that's, that's made it to quite a good cosmetic state. The inside, has a lot of work to do yet, but the outside is looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks at the moment. If you look at Defenders now online, you'll see that Defender prices have gone up and I think they've gone up because the new Defender has been launched and come out and how different it is to this style of car and this series of car. And I do think that's probably gonna keep going up. I think there's less Defenders on the road. A lot of them die because they get written off or just rust to death, which is quite common in these cars. And this car does have a few rust issues, but nothing too significant. And I've got on top of all of that. But I think Defender values are probably going up in price. And I think if you've got a Defender and you can you can keep it and you uh, you enjoy it, it's a really good car to hold on to. If you want to see some of the things that I've done to this car, I've got loads of videos on my YouTube channel um, from cutting out these back quarter panel windows um, to changing the tyres, to respraying body parts, everything pretty much I've done in this car, I've tried to document it on YouTube, including all the engine remap and performance stuff I've done. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see in particular about this car as well, because I'm really interested to hear what things you want to see more about with my Defender. Happy to make more videos and content around those particular issues that you're interested in seeing more about. So what has ownership been like? Well, like I say, I owned it about two years now and I haven't really had any significant problems. I, I When I bought the car, I took it for a service uh, just to check everything was all right. They changed the oils and um, they told me it was a pretty good example, which is always good to hear from a Land Rover uh, specialist uh, garage. And uh, yeah, in the time I've owned it, I haven't had any particularly big mechanical issues that have been caused by the car. I have caused some mechanical issues myself, as those that follow the channel might have seen, when I cracked my radiator and all the other issues I did while I was trying to fix the car or add bits to it. So apart from things that I've done to the car, it's actually been um, really reliable. In fact, it's been more reliable 
than my Discovery 5 that, I've, that I own as well. Um, that's broken down way more times than this ever has, which is saying something considering this is 14 years old. So ownership wise, I've really enjoyed having this car. I've got to admit, I don't use it as my daily driving car. I use it at weekends. I use it on some days, depending what I'm doing. I often, uh, I'm lucky enough to not have to drive too much for work. So actually my car itself, this car is more of a, a toy car. I use it um, occasionally and I probably use it every few days. It's not something I use regularly. And so for that, I can really enjoy driving this car, particularly now I've had the remap. It's quite a fun car to drive in. If I was driving it every day and I had to commute in it, I probably wouldn't think it was so great. There have been times when I've, with this car that I've thought, should I trade it in for a Puma? Well, I've done those few more miles in it because those cars are meant to be much more comfortable on the on the roads. So I'd say if you're picking a car to be an everyday driver and it's a TD5, unless you're willing to spend a lot of money on the interior, getting the remap done and really kitting out for road driving, they're not that comfortable. And this, to be fair, does have the mud terrain tires on it and is a bit squeaky inside. But generally, it's a pretty good example of what defenders can drive like. They're not brilliant drivers if you're looking at buying one particularly the TD5 model. While we're here, let me just show you a quick tour around my car today. So, it is a little bit windy, but as you can see, it's my Defender. LED lights all round, and I think looks pretty good uh, for a Defender. Pretty happy with the way it looks at the moment. So I'd say my Defender ownership journey has been pretty positive. I've really enjoyed having this car and I don't regret buying it at all. But I do think there's a few things you've got to be prepared for when you buy a Defender because they're not the most comfortable. There are certain quirks about the Defender that you'll that you'll find. But I think as far as like a car you can get your hands into and a bit of a project, they're brilliant cars. It's been really, really good fun. And I've got no intention of selling this car at all at the moment. Now here on YouTube, I've done videos with my Defender, with my Discovery. Um, my channel's called The Doctor's Garage. But I'm always open to ideas that you guys might have that you want to see particularly more about this car so any videos you want to see me make in the future let me know in the comments below and I'm more than happy to kind of put stuff together around that um, to help kind of guide on what you guys find interesting at home so I can create more content around it basically. Now I hope you've enjoyed watching this video today as a bit of an insight into my journey owning a Defender 90 the sort of pros and cons with it, the finances of it. For me, it's been a worthwhile investment actually, even financially, because I do think if I was to sell this car, I could sell it for at least how much I bought it for, plus what I've spent on it. But I'm interested to hear, what do you guys think about that? Am I right there? Does, is this car worth about 21, 22 at the moment? Uh, we're not actually saying that. But what do you guys think at home? Is this car worth you know, the 15, 16, 17, 18, 19,000 pound at the moment. I think it probably is if I look online at defenders that are available right now. But interested to hear what you guys think about the value of this car. Um, but yeah, I think there's a few things to be aware of. If you're buying it, security being a big issue, you've got to keep these cars behind um, locked gates. You've got to have multiple layers of security on the car like I do uh, to make sure that they can't be stolen because they are quite a stolen car and they get stripped and, and taken apart and they're quite hard to find again, actually. I think one of the big things about having a Land Rover Defender is the community around it. The community is really supportive, even with you guys here on YouTube that subscribe to the channel. You all love Land Rover Defenders and you've got loads of great insights and knowledge into the specifics of how these cars are put together and also advice when you're trying to repair cars, which I found massively beneficial when I had some issues with my car myself. So the community around Land Rover Defenders is really, really big and it's really, really supportive, which has been a great part of the ownership journey, I guess, for me having a Defender. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. Please click subscribe, like this video, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see in the future. And uh, I'll see you soon here on YouTube.